You are watching the Mid-Table and Up podcast highlights. Please put your foot through that like button and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, as well as Spotify and the podcasts app. up until and about last season I've gone with the 2010 World Cup winner Fernando Lorente as my number 10 and the reason why I put Lorente down is because I think you know he was a decent he was a decent enough striker he had a decent you know he had a decent goal record at Atletico Bilbao uh, while he while he was there but obviously he went to that World Cup squad and, and I am being a little bit I will say I'm being a little bit harsh here just in the sense that you know he he didn't get a, he didn't play a single minute of that tournament, which mm. when you think of the 2010 Spain there's Spain squad, there's a reason why he didn't play a single minute. You know, like even Fabregas wasn't starting those games. Uh, you know, or at least up until the final, he wasn't starting games. Even Torres, who was on the you know largely on the bench in that tournament, wasn't starting games. Torres so, didn't come on until the 106th minute. Yeah, so you you kind of got to think if. Fernando Torres and Cesc Fabregas are, are struggling to get into the team. What chances Fernando Lorente got? Um, so, uh, you know, I've gone with him, obviously, uh, you know, shortly after that. He went to Swansea for a little while. You know, was kind of, again, didn't really do much there. Didn't really do much at Spurs, apart from obviously score that incredibly important goal in the Champions League quarterfinal against Man City, uh, which was ultimately the decider. But... Outside of that, you know, his goals to game record, uh, goals to game ratio, I should say, at both Swansea and Spurs, it wasn't, it wasn't that great. And as I said, you know, I am, you know, probably, uh, you know, putting him on the list as much to do with the fact, that, as I said before, he didn't, he didn't play a single minute at the tournament. He was kind of just there to fill a, you know, to fill a space basically to make up the mum- numbers. Mm. So. Yeah, that that's why I've gone with Fernando Lorente as uh, my number ten to kick things off. I think Fernando Llorente was probably a plan B that they never needed in terms of the big unit centre forward. Oh, definitely. Do, do you know what I mean? Like that Spain side, as you say, was yeah, yeah. with talent and skill. It's like, well, if we're behind, we might need a big centre forward to go on and knock it in the box to. Nah, mm. we, we're just better than everyone at this tournament. But yeah, what, yeah. if I remember rightly, did in that tournament was that the year they played Fabregas in a false nine in one of the games? No, that was the Euro twenty twelve um, tournament where they where they usually dis, uh, where they usually played Fabregas as a false nine. Because Llorente was at that tournament as well in the twenty twelve. Oh, was so he? That, yeah, yeah, and he was. Wow, like, I didn't even think he made the squad that year. <laughs> I yeah, didn't even think he made the squad that year. So yeah, I was looking at it, and he didn't play a single minute at that tournament either. So he's got a World Cup winners medal a Euro winner's medal, and he didn't play a minute in either tournament. So you've got, you've got to admire him a little bit. Like he's, no, he's a little bit, like at the end of the day. Two, yeah. two, two medals. Yeah. No, as I said, like, you know, he was a decent striker. Let, let's, you know, make no bones. Just like realistically, the, the majority of these lists are going to be filled with decent players. But well, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were talking beforehand and I said, I think, we're not going to get anywhere near a World Cup, so it makes us feel a bit better by taking the mick out of some people who have. And I think, yeah, I think yeah. that's kind of where we get with this. All of these players yeah. are a million times better than us. They had good but careers, yeah. all of them. But oh, of course. It, it's picking the worst of a good bunch, really, isn't it? That's what we're I mean, doing. It, it, let's be real. Like Fernando Llorente effectively won the professional footballer lottery in the sense that he was around the, at the time that that great Spain squad was around, but ultimately he was nowhere near good enough to, you know, get really properly break into that team, at least at the tournaments, but was good enough to be included in the squad. So you, you still have yeah. to be pretty good to make that squad though, to be fair, to be like, I'm not, I'm not, but I, I but agree yeah, he, that Urante could realistically could they, be on there. They, they could have, if they wanted to, they could have dropped him and put any other player from any other position, from any other division into his spot and it wouldn't have made a blind bit of difference because he didn't play and that player that they would have been replacing him with regardless of their position wouldn't have been playing either they effectively could have had a 22-man squad 
in the, in the 2010 World Cup rather than the uh, rather than 23. So yeah, my number 10, I went with Fernando Lorente. Okay, absolutely good uh, good shout. And I think um, you're right when you look at that 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 Spanish side. Um, interesting career though, moved around to a lot of clubs and and really since yeah. leaving, you know. You could argue since leaving Juve, but even since since leaving Athletic Bilbao, never really got it going again, unfortunately. So God, yeah, no, I'd, I'd even forgot he had a spell with Juve. That's yeah, he was kind of how for. Yeah, I'd read that up as well. That's kind of how <laughs> forgettable it was. <laughs> uh, he's I've, played for a lot of big clubs, but ultimately has. I mean, you say he was good at Athletic Bilbao, but it's, he had got big moves. But since then, it's just kind of been. He's everyone's sort yeah. of second or third choice striker. Mm. That's yeah, kind I'm with you on that. His level, it's like you're good enough to be as he was for Spain. It's like you're good enough to be in the squad, but you're nowhere near the team. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. his whole career has been. He a has a like Spanish that. passport. I think that's about as close as to the team he got. <laughs> for is a player we have already mentioned, uh, and it's Fernando Llorente. Um, mm. Ooh, yeah. It, so why so high? So why so high up on the list? Because I know we have. We have covered him, as you said. So yeah. yeah. So why is he so high on the list? I was thinking about this when you had him at ten, and as you say, he's had a pretty good career. I just, I think maybe it's because of maybe recent experiences, and that's what sort of stuck in my head. If yeah. that makes sense, I don't. Obviously, we don't we don't watch Bill Bow that much. I, I don't no. watch Bill Bow that often, so I can't really tell you how good he was at Bill Bow. So. But what I do have as a reference point is him at Tottenham. Him and at even Tottenham. then, that was like 10 years ago yeah. now, wasn't so it, really, that he was good That's what around. I mean. I don't really remember him being mm. good. I remember him being not good. So that's probably why he's factored yeah. so much higher than potentially he deserves, is that I don't have the frame of reference of him being a good centre forward. I, only him as kind of a bit lazy. I mean, he's, so, he's so slow these days. I remember that, he was cheap on FIFA. I mean, that's that's as good a reason to have him here as any. You know, any little positive you, you can find, I suppose. But yeah, I think I think for me, that's why he's he's much higher than maybe he deserves. And again, I think it was also really that thing if he played in two tournaments, didn't play a minute and won two medals. It's like, again, he's not only done it once, he's not only burgled a World Cup, but a European Championship as well. I think I think that's pretty incredible for him. It's quite it's quite an achievement that. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, no, that yeah, fair enough. No, you know, worthy, worthy place. I think uh... that's the final whistle. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Mid Table and Up podcast. If you enjoy our top ten lists, please make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Let us know what you would have done differently. If you watch this episode on YouTube, make sure to put your foot through that subscribe button and leave a like on the video, as well as follow us on Spotify, the podcast app, to keep up to date with the series. Thank you very much. See you next time.